Okay, looks like some folks are, are popping in here. Welcome to another uh, QB Power Hour. Uh, this is the Scaling New Heights uh, edition of the QB Power Hour. Uh, currently, Michelle is actually on site at, um, at Scaling New Heights, which is actually going on in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. So we're expecting not as much uh, attendance, but for those of you that are joining us today, we appreciate that. Uh, Michelle uh, couldn't make it today, so uh, she, it's just going to be me and our guest today. Uh, so a little bit about Michelle. Of course, you know that she is the owner of Long for Success, part of the Intuit Trainer Writer Network, author of five books. Um, and our Facebook group just uh, just surpassed 12,000 members, so um, that's pretty awesome. Uh, so if you're, if you're not uh, part of that group, go ahead and join that. Uh, my name is Dan DeLong, uh, the co-host, uh, owner of Dan With, worked at Intuit for about 18 years. Uh, your co-host today and uh, co-hosting of Workshop Wednesdays and uh, chief content creator at uh, schoolbookkeeping.com, tech editor for QGO for Dummies. And now I get to put another one on this, uh, just uh, was announced at uh, Scaling New Heights, that I am social media pro advisor of the year. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Um, I'm really humbled about that. That's pretty, uh, I'm pretty uh, stoked uh, about that as well. And uh, Brett is joining us today. Brett, want to introduce yourself? Hey, guys. I'm Brett Arrington. I'm a customer experience speaker and consultant um, and practitioner in my own businesses. i um, worked on two continents with companies like Lexus, Rolls-Royce, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, uh, Lion Airlines, Sodexo, and a lot of others. Just helping people create customer experiences for their customers that uh, make them better companies, better companies to work for, better companies to uh, to work with and better companies to to buy from that's kind of the main goal of the customer experience so glad to be with you guys today and uh really thanks for joining us today brett i um ever since i met you uh, i met i met brett at our, our b and i uh, group uh, networking group uh turns out brett's also a really good roofer <laughs> and literally saved the sale of my home uh so we'll talk a little bit about some of that some of those experiences uh, as well. So um, thanks for thanks for joining us uh, today, Brett. Uh, so little details about the QB Power Hour webinars. Of course, um, you know, it's every other Tuesday at 12 noon Eastern, um, depending on, uh, you know, even uh, whether or not uh, there's conferences going on as well. <laughs> uh, but some upcoming uh, webinars, the next one we're going to have is talking about the uh, Intuit online payroll, which is uh, going away. So RIP to o IOP uh, and how to evaluate new payroll options. Um, ADP is gonna join us and, and talk about some of their uh, payroll options. Uh, now we won't have a webinar uh, after that because it's uh, Thanksgiving week and we wanna uh, offer you the, the time off to be able to, to, to be with family and, and friends and stuff yourself. <laughs> And then after that, uh, we'll have our, our yearly uh, prepping for year end uh, webinar as well. And you have the links there for the uh, slides and recordings, as well as the podcast. And um, <clears throat> next week, uh, or is it next week? Um, two weeks from now, uh, there will be the Q uh, QB Connect and Michelle and I are actually going to be doing a little meetup there. So um, if you haven't registered for QB Connect, uh, you can do that. Um, and then uh, it's all virtual and free. So you can go to uh, quickbooksconnect.com and register there. A little bit of housekeeping. Uh, of course, uh, any questions that you have specifically uh, for, for Brett during, the, during this webinar series or this webinar today, uh, please put them in the Q&A, especially since uh, Michelle's not joining us. Uh, it's a little hard to manage the conversation as well as the questions. Uh, so please put questions directly related to, um, to the topic in the Q&A section. Uh, any comments or, or just sidebar conversations like uh, congratulations, which I see is, <laughs> is coming in, uh, in the chat. Um, and of course, we have the links for the... Um, uh, the the handouts here. I'll put I'll post that in the in the chat as well because uh, I know people want to have that the handout the slides handout. So today we're going to be talking about customer service. Uh, as many of you know, I worked at Intuit for about eighteen years, um, and the name of my job evolved <laughs> based on um, 
the, the, the concepts uh, are revolving around customer service uh, as well. You know, it's, when I started, it was a, a tech support. Um, and then it, now, if you, if you were to uh, work at Intuit, it would be customer care. <laughs> so the, they evolved the, the, the terminology. Um, and, and Brett's going to talk a little bit about what, what that means, you know, the difference between customer service and customer experience. And then uh, satisfaction or seduction. So uh, we'll, we'll keep it clean. Well, at least we'll try to, but uh, <laughs> I rarely maybe keep... not with, uh, with Brett and I on the same. <laughs> so we'll start off with a, with a poll, um, you know, because one thing that, that customer service has to do is you have to talk to customers, right? So uh, if you have to reach out to your clients, um, where did it go? There it is. It's on the other screen. Uh, so let me launch a poll. So when, when I have to reach out to my clients, I fill in the blank, right? Uh, I delegate to somebody else. Uh, I run and hide. <laughs> I put on my big, bro, big boy or big girl pants, or I just call them. Uh, so Brett, you and I were having this uh, conversation yesterday. You, you had a, an interesting story about um, a company that you had worked with uh, and, and reaching out to their customers. Yeah, I was, uh, I was actually in Chile in South America at the time working with a, a chain of funeral homes and cemeteries. We're talking to one of the largest companies in Chile. And I was sitting with the, the, the C-suite and they were talking about how they had a lack of knowledge of the customer. Like, what do our customers want? We feel like we really don't know them. And I was like, well, why don't we, why don't we start something? Why don't you guys you know, take time out of your day once a day and call one customer and have a small conversation with them? And... Uh, complete silence like you could have heard a pin drop in that room and and fidgeting and, and nervousness and what i'm well well we're, we're we're pretty busy uh, i don't know if we can we can call a customer every single day and i was like okay what about once a week well you i don't think you understand how busy we really are and it's like once a month once a year and it was kind of obvious that they didn't want to reach out to customers they didn't they didn't want it. they didn't want to take that time take that small little effort of maybe a call a week or a call a month to start to get to know their customers. And it was at that point that I realized that uh, they probably weren't going to improve on their customer experience. <laughs> yeah. If you're not going to talk to your customers, um, that's probably not going to, not going to improve. Yeah, so most of the folks here are. Um, uh, the thousand pound phone. I like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's uh, it's always a, a challenge sometimes, but I, I remember talking to, to to customers on the phone when they would call into it, and I would say, you know, you're gonna have to reach out to your customer, um, you know, and ask them to do something. And I think uh, I think in that regard, it's probably you know, not just like reaching out to your customer when you when you have to, but when you need to, and and that was a little bit there was a, there was some hesitancy. Um, you know, because there was some, maybe something that they didn't need to want, to, want them to, to know or talk, talk about uh, to, the, to their customer. But most of the folks here, uh, they just pick up the phone and, and, and call. So that's great. So you're dealing with the right, right kind of people, Brett. Awesome. Also awesome. <laughs> talk a little bit about, um, you, you can just tell me to advance the slides or, or how, however you want to do it. Cause you're, you're on site at uh, Taco Bell, right? Well, <laughs> actually, one of my, one of my former clients, actually. Um, yeah. So yeah, so my customers called Customer XP. Um, we do a lot of training, a lot of uh, helping customers establish processes for customer experience. A lot of people ask me, like, you know, what's customer experience? To me, customer experience is designing how you want your customers to feel, and that that's done by process. Um, smiling, smiling is an important part, but it, it can only get. You how do you get the right people in the right spot? How do you how do you make sure that that those wow moments are replicable? Um, and that's what we help companies do. Why don't you go ahead and, and advance there now? And uh, an, inter an interesting side note is that one of the things about that I've realized about you know being in business for yourself is that even though you're uh, you may not like it, um, sales and customer service is always always part of what you do, right? I mean, it, as much as you may not want to be in sales, you are in sales. <laughs> uh, or, or, and then and, and customer service is part of that, right? 
And I would say the customer service is an essential part of sales. The, the better you get at providing that service or what we call that experience, um, more sales come your way. Uh, Dan had mentioned that I, that I own a roofing company, um, kind of a weird thing for a customer experience consultant to, to do. And, and really, I just had a little side job doing roofing. Um, I have a family member that builds a lot of homes. And one time he was complaining about about not not being able to have roofing contractors well we grew up my grandpa taught us all how to roof we would every summer we'd roof little ladies roofs in my grandpa's town um this one well i can i can do your roofs and i would just do contractor roofs and and my guys would show up and they would do the roofs and i was just basically doing phone calls and, and having this little side gig and then covid hit um and when covid hit my consulting business basically went to zero in a hurry, I was supposed to start two pretty big projects and they said, well, we're going to hold off. Um, why don't you call us in six to nine months? And it was one of those moments where you're like, you know what? I've always wanted to uh, put in practice this customer experience talk that I teach to people. And I said, let's do a, let's do a roofing company where we, where we, we uh, roof customers, roofs, um, retail, not just contractors. And we've, We've done some amazing things since uh, COVID hit, just applying the things that I teach to people. Um, a lot of that is the communication. A lot of that is uh, kind of looking at the competition and seeing where they're lacking. Uh, luckily in, in the roofing industry, anyone who's had their <laughs> roof, really the bar is pretty low. Um, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not jumping <laughs> high hurdles, but crazy little things of like, we get to someone's roof within 48 hours and they get an estimate on the spot. Um, we welcome questions. We don't hide from questions. We answer the phone when, it, when people call. Uh, we use software for automated communications. Um, and that's something new that Dan, we didn't have when we did Dan's roof, but you get texts the night before, you get progress photo text automatically. And, and uh, really we've had, I mean, we only have five-star reviews on Google, which is something we're gonna talk about here in a little bit, the, the value of the value of the voice of the customer. One of those, one of those main ways is through Yelp um, services like Google, where people can get evaluated and the importance it is to, to actually ask for those things. But um, we've grown from a company that did three roofs a week to, to a company that's on, on pace. I mean, if we keep up this pace, we'll do 6 million in sales over the next uh, 12 months, just applying customer experience. I mean, a roof's a roof's a roof. I mean, mo most roofing companies can do a quality roof. The materials, they're all the same. Um, and so in a lot of ways, roofing in and of itself is a commodity. Um, and a lot, of things that, a lot of things that we do is a commodity. I mean, bookkeeping, I get, all, I get four or five offers a week to do my bookkeeping. And really visually, I mean, you guys know the nuances, but I can't really see the difference between them except for how they offer it to me. Mm -hmm. right? And that's where, that's where the customer experience really can make you shine. For yeah, me, one of the um, just as a, as a side note here, uh, someone is asking what software are you using for the roof uh, roofing company? They have clients using Builder Trend. Do you have the something specific uh, that yeah, you're so using, two, or do you? The two main softwares I use are uh, Job Nimbus and well, three Job Nimbus Company Cam and Sumo Quote, um, and that just makes it so that we can we can keep track of everything. Sumo Quote makes beautiful estimates. In, in minutes instead of sitting down and trying to trying to work through it. And uh, company cam is is a beautiful software for any 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 builders or anything you guys have as clients to recommend because you can do amazing before and after pictures. You can do a lot of things and it integrates with all those other softwares. And, and obviously uh, we use QuickBooks. Of course you wouldn't be well, here if you didn't we're not using anything <laughs> like wave accounting or anything like that. We're serious. Oh, no. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> but it's awesome that you you took uh you're taking your um your business as kind of like a a, a, a testing ground for for your own customer experience uh you're kind of eating your own dog food <laughs> yeah and, and and really I'm, I'm writing a book as i go so it's been kind of interesting so let next year uh be on the lookout for that it should go it should it should be done right. sometime mid next year and be able to get out there one thing I do talk about a lot is ice cream. Um, I'm, I'm not a, I'm, I'm an adult, so I don't eat a whole lot of ice cream as I tell my kids. But to me, customer service is that vanilla ice cream cone, right? We all eat vanilla ice cream cones, um, but 
I can go right now to a quick trip gas station, which is a, a good company here. I can get that ice cream cone for 49 cents. Um, we can go to McDonald's and get it, I think, for 89 cents. A vanilla cone's great. Vanilla ice cream cone, but it's not something I'm going to really talk about. I don't, I don't get home in the evening and tell my wife, wow, I ate a vanilla cone at McDonald's today. Right? It's, it's not story worthy to me. And in fact, if I showed up and told my family, you should have seen this vanilla cone I ate, they'd look at me like I had a screw loose. And most, most companies that, uh, most companies that offer their services is, are pretty vanilla is what I call them. There's, there's very little risk. There's very little trying to be, to be better than the rest. I'm, go to, go to any, any kind of industry and just look at the pamphlets you can grab. If you cut out logos, there's no difference between the rest of them. That's where in roofing, it's pretty easy because I have a, my estimates are 12 pages long where the competition sometimes is written on the back of a business card. Um, it's, it's really easy to not be vanilla in, in that industry. And, and, and I don't know a huge amount uh, of the industry of you guys, but I really think there is an opportunity to kind of stray, stray away from that vanilla. Um, go ahead and go to the next one. Now, this is something we're talking yeah. about. Are these, yeah. <laughs> I, might be, I, might be, I might be willing to go back and, and talk about that um, to my family. You know, I, I had this thing. It had real mint leaves. Uh, it had, looks like Werther's Originals in there or, or whatever those candies are. Um, that's the difference between the customer service and the customer experience. Customer Five service. Cavities. It, it, well, they'll both give you cavities, Dan. Just, yep. just, <laughs> you'll just enjoy one of them a lot more. <laughs> well, enjoy getting those cavities because you and, have this beforehand. Exactly. You'll, you'll, you'll tell your doctor you earned those categories, those, ca those cavities. <laughs> um, but one of the, one of the big differences is you'll talk about that one. Um, I, I don't know if you guys ever gone and say, hey, the other day, I, my wife and I had to go to San Diego. We were going to go to Carlsbad to uh, we'd heard about a strawberry farm up there. And a friend of ours told us, if you're going to go to Carlsbad, you've got to go to this place. Has that ever happened to you guys? Why would someone go out on a limb and recommend a place? No one's ever told me. If you're going to go to Phoenix, you've got to hit the McDonald's on the corner of McDowell and, and uh, third, third Ave. No one's ever told me that, but they will say, if you're going to go to Phoenix, you got to go to Bianca's pizza. Why? Cause, cause at Bianca's pizza, the guy wakes up every morning and makes that dough by hand. Um, he's out there. The owner's out there talking to people The the food is superb. The wait is long, but people are willing to make the wait. What did they do? Because their wait was long. They bought a bar across the street. So you can wait in the bar for your table to be ready. Um, those wow. are guys who understand that they're not vanilla. How many pizza places, one, have a wait, and two, decided to buy a bar for the people to wait? That's fantastic. I think we had a little glitch there. Are we back? Yeah. Here we are. Um, but it's it's a different it's a different story when you're doing customer customer experience because while we all may eat vanilla, we're not talking about it. We're not telling our friends about vanilla. No one's ever said if you're gonna go to to Albuquerque, New Mexico, you got to stop in and get a vanilla cone, right? Unless that vanilla cone had something else going for it. Right. Do we understand the concept of the, of vanilla? I think so. So the the last thing we want to be is vanilla because. In the, at the end of the day, everyone talks about brand today. Brand's an important, important part of conversations in business. And a lot of people think it's your logo. A lot of people think the colors you use are important. Really, what customer experience is, I don't know what's going on, Dan. Sorry. <laughs> no, I hear you. I hear you fine. Okay. It's just your, your video cuts out every now and then. But that's, okay. that's, that's the least of what. <laughs> okay, as long as, not, as long as I can be heard, I guess. Yeah. Um, Anyways, so the brand is what people are saying about you when you're not around, basically. And so if you're vanilla, people aren't talking about you. 
right? If you're less than vanilla, people are talking bad about you. But the idea here is to be more than vanilla. Um, you've got companies like Zappos. Who here has bought shoes from Zappos? You have to raise your hand <laughs> if you're uh, if you had bought bought from Zappos. But uh, anyways, listen. I've bought I've bought yeah. shoes from 10, 11, 11 people raise their hand. So that's pretty good. <laughs> my wife has bought a disgusting amount of shoes. Um, Zappos. Zappos doesn't spend money on marketing; they spend money on customer experience. Um, and, and actually, if you're ever in Las Vegas, you can do a tour of Zappos and they'll talk about their culture and how that creates a customer experience. It's pretty amazing. I, I highly recommend it. But the Zappos, when they started their business, they were told, you, sorry, Taco Bell is just not what it used to be. Um, <laughs> they were told you will never be able to sell shoes online, right? And Zappos went ahead and they changed, they changed the world of online retail. Amazon bought Zappos for a billion dollars um, because of the equity they had throughout through with their customers. And so, well, when we're talking about vanilla, we're talking about satisfaction. Satisfaction is the base level of acceptance. Satisfaction is a transaction. You offered me a product or service for an amount I gave you that service. You paid the amount. Neither one of us owes each other anything. I'm satisfied, but I'm not. I'm not amazed, um, and I'm not. I'm not going to be talking about it as much. To satisfaction. That's just like uh, that's just like a neutral, right? Like uh, that's, that's the bar. Yeah, if you're going to play poker, you got to ante up, and satisfaction is your ante. Ah, gotcha. right. But when we're talking about customer experience, you can go to the next one, Dan. Um, and, and actually, you hear a lot of companies say satisfaction is our goal. Satisfaction is, is uh, what we're aiming for. Customer satisfaction, you can see it at Walmart. Um, a lot of hotels have signs. Satisfaction is so vanilla that you can get this sign on Amazon for nine bucks. Um, and having your goals, customer satisfactions is a pretty low bar. Because if we look at the next slide, According to the Timken Group, who does a lot of a lot of customer experience surveys, 86% of customers who claim to be satisfied are willing to try another brand. Right? Like I'm I'm pretty satisfied with uh, with uh, Nike shoes, for example. But I'm not I'm not overly loyal to them. Right? Do you guys have any things that that you're like that that you? Uh, a that brand sounds, that you like, you know, but you're not, you're not particularly loyal to. Yeah, think of a brand uh, that you that you like, but not not necessarily loyal to. Give some examples of like electronics, um, cars, uh, Coke or Pepsi. Uh, if you have something specific, go ahead and enter that uh, enter that in the in the chat. And one of the things, as you were saying what you were talking about, I, I, I'm thinking about the, that appliance guy in. Um, in Tucson there and like your, your satisfaction is our priority. <laughs> you know, he's, 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 he's right in line with what you're, uh, with what you're saying there. Their goal is, uh, is satisfaction. Oh, are you inside now, Brett? <laughs> right on. So, yeah, there's a bunch of semis coming, so I'm going to... Um, All right. On location. <laughs> it's a... So there's a lot of these brands that, that we like, but we're not particularly loyal to. And so if your goal is satisfaction, think about that for a second. Your goal is to have almost 90% of your customers willing to go somewhere else. Yeah, that, that's a pretty Doesn't high sound statistic. Like a great, <laughs> so what can we do? Yeah, 86 is a, very, is a very scary number for me, where it's like 86 of my customers are willing to go somewhere else, to use another roofer, to use another consultant. That's a little scary for me, right? 
And so what can right? satisfaction is doing our job right, right? Because if I go to, if I go to get my oil change, I expect them, I expect them to change my oil correctly. And I expect them to do it as quick as possible. I expect when I have my appointment that they're ready. All that, all those things are operational practices. All those things are doing your job well. We expect that because that's what, that's what we were offered and that's what we're paying for. Go to the next slide. Customer experience is a little bit more. Customer experience is creating emotion by exceeding customer expectations. So emotions are, are an interesting concept. Emotions are created when our expectations either aren't met or they're exceeded. One, one cool thing about emotions is our emotional memory is a, lot, is a lot better. If you think back to your childhood, think about a moment that you remember in your childhood and the reason you remember it is because it was linked to either a positive or a negative emotion, right? We can still remember, I mean, I'm 41 years old. I can remember, I can remember explicit moments in school because I either had a positive or a negative emotion. And so customer experience is a game of managing customer expectations. That's why it's really important to talk to our customers so that we can know what expectations they have. Um, if, we, if we don't, we have to go blind and sometimes we don't meet or we can't see those expectations. Now, another, another important thing is we could all call our customers right now and I could say, hey, we're gonna all give you guys a $500 Amazon gift card and we would exceed expectations. But from a business standpoint, that's not going to be good for our business. So the name of the game is to exceed these expectations in a way that's economically viable. Yeah. I mean, uh, an example I, I can think of is, uh, you know, one of the thing, one of the many things that you did to literally save the sale of my home <laughs> um, was to go get keys made. Like we were four hours away. We only had one set of keys. No one else was there. And, um, and, and you offered to go to the neighbor's house who had our keys, pick up a set of keys, run over to Ace Hardware, pick up, uh, you know, and make several copies of the, of the keys and, and made those, those, uh, those keys available. And you did that. Um, you know, that was certainly not something I would have expected a roofer to do. <laughs> um, but and it was just a little tiny thing. Funny thing about that story is I got those, I forgot to pay them and I had to go back. <laughs> I realized oh, I got to your house that I hadn't paid for the keys and so I had to go back to Ace and pay for them. But yeah, what did that really yeah. cost me? That was a way that I could exceed Dan's expectations that was very economically viable because I didn't even pay for them. <laughs> I stole those keys. <laughs> um, now, like you, you said- walked out the door. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, I, I did go back and pay for them though. Um, but, but basically, That's not always, I mean, I there's we're having some trouble with your I call uh, the, audio the, uh, low hanging fruit. When there's you, a low hanging fruit, I grab it. Can you um, say that again? We uh, were at a house. We were at, we were at a, a house one time. And, uh, the grandson some came trouble and with your audio. I sent one of my guys right away to buy a, to buy a birthday card and we gave him 20 bucks. Really that, that didn't cost me. Let me is that better? Yeah, it's good now. It's funny. Yeah, it's funny that, we're, um, we're at an elderly lady's home. Home, and her grandson came. He was about 10. I sent one of my guys hustling over to Walmart. Um, can, can you guys all hear me now well? Can you hear me? I'm hearing you okay now. Okay. The awesome. expectation of internet is um, is pretty, not, <laughs> is not I'm, satisfactory right now. <laughs> I'm feeling some negative emotions for sure. Um, <laughs> and so after that, so I, for those that didn't hear the story, we were at an elderly lady's house 
in the roof. I happened to be there to check on the crews. I realized her grandson was the old, roughly 10 year old boy. Sent one of my guys to Walmart to buy a card and gave him 20 bucks. Those people love me. They've given us, they've given us five or six roofs since then. Well, so then I had this idea. And so I had, I had birthday cards made with our logo on. Um, and so I have these cards ready. So once I, if I'm ever presented with that, with that um, situation again, we immediately have these cards. We carry $5 gift cards to PetSmart. If we see someone that loves their pet, we say, hey, can we give your pet a gift? And we give them a $5 PetSmart gift card. Those things get talked about because it's not what you expect from a roofing company. Right? And when it's not what you expect, it creates positive emotions. And so in the main town that we do roofing in, it's a smaller town. Um, we're pretty much closing down other roofing companies because we do those little things. We're not cheaper than them. We're, we're faster than them. We get to your house faster. We get you an estimate faster and we get to your roof faster. And any little thing we can do, we do it. Uh, and so it's these expectations. And so what we did with this birthday card is we created a system. We haven't been able to use it yet, but all my guys have birthday cards in their trucks with $20 bills. In them. If they find this situation again, it's, imp it's instantly implementable. One thing we do, we go to neighbors' houses the night before and we knock on their doors and say, hey, we're going to be doing your neighbor's roof. If we're parked in the wrong spot, if we're making too much noise, if there's any hassles, please give us a call. Neighbors don't expect that. The homeowner doesn't expect they, that. They expect to be canvassed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they, they expect, yeah. okay, oh, they're, they're going to pitch us on, on uh, inspecting the roof and finding some nitpicky thing to cause me to want to exactly. replace my roof and the beauty of it is we don't have to canvas them because a lot of those people call us and buy roofs off of us or they recommend it to someone else and so it's just these little things that doing the we call that the five around we knock the five doors nearest to the house and we tell them hey we're going to be here if there's any issues let us know we leave them a business card that doesn't cost us hard to, i mean that costs us almost nothing i mean there is there's some employee time there but other than that, it, 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 it's basically free, but it enhances the customer experience because we seed expectations. We create positive emotions that people can remember because they don't need a roof today, but they're going to need a roof in five years or in three years, someone's going to say, I need to get a roof done. And they'll be like, dude, I've got this guy. And that's where the little things that make you the guy. And, and so how can, let's go to the next slide. Then. And so we have, we have this game between satisfaction and seduction. If we don't have satisfaction, we can't have the seduction, right? Because I can, I can have amazing customer service, but if my ice cream is bad or my roof leak, it's not going to really matter. Yeah. Satisfaction, that's your starting point. When everyone's looking to have vanilla, you have something a little bit better, right? Costs sometimes are a little bit more. Usually they're not a whole lot more, but sometimes costs are a little bit more. But the benefit that it brings long-term is where, is where we live, right? I don't do any marketing for roofing, but I get calls every day. Yeah, and where do I- the busiest call? roofers I know. <laughs> yeah, I get calls from Google because I have only five-star reviews because I have a rule. I tell everyone, if I, I only accept five stars. So if there's anything you're not happy with, you give me a call and I will make it right. Um, last week, we did a roof. We only use one brand of shingles because we like the quality. But the name of that color is, a, is the same of another brand. And we got a brand delivered. My guys didn't notice it and they put the wrong roof on and so instead of Owens Corning Driftwood, they got IKO Driftwood. That lady called me on Sunday and said, or she sent me a text and said, I need to talk to you. I'm not happy with my roof. I called her instantly. She said, oh, Brad, I'm sorry. I didn't expect you to call me today. So I already knew that I was in a good spot. I didn't expect you to call me today. I said, what's the problem? Right. She's like, well, you know, on the contract and what you sold me was Owens Corning and I got IKO. And I was like, really? She sent me a 
picture of a bundle of seals Okay, we're redoing your roof. And she said, "No, no, 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 no. I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to be that kind of customer. I'm not that. I'm not." But I said, "Jimmy, are the issues better now?" They, they are. Every time you say, "Are they better?" It's like perfect. Okay, well, I'll just keep that. <laughs> um. Okay, I'll, I'll unplug and maybe that'll work. I'm talking now. Can I be? Am, am I being heard? Yes. Yeah. Sorry about the the bad customer service of the audio. I don't. <laughs> so I had internet problems in my office. I had to run next door to Taco Bell, and I guess it was a bad idea. Anyways, and so when a customer presents a problem, there's always a great opportunity to exceed expectations. Complaining customers are my favorite because the bar, the expectation bar lowers and I can easily yeah. exceed the expectations. And the, those become your, your biggest promoters. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about promoters here in a little bit um, and what, what they are and what I do with promoters that's different from everyone else. So I wanted to, just, I wanted to give you guys three examples of some great customer experience. I have a client in Mexico that's a supermarket chain. And in one of those stores, they had an elderly couple that went to eat breakfast every day at their store. They have a little cafeteria set up next to the store. It's amazing. If you're ever in Juarez or Monterey, go to Asmar. It's beautiful. Anyways, this elderly couple. Because you can go to Mexico and get a, get a breakfast for about a dollar every single day. Well, this company has perfect attendance um, prizes for their people. So every every three months, they have a perfect attendance meeting, and and these guys get a pin to wear on their on their uniform, and they get a little bonus, and they and they get a lunch. Well, the store manager said, "Well, these guys have perfect attendance too." So he included the customers in that perfect attendance meeting. He got them shirts with the for that the people in the company wear. He, he gave them their little perfect attendance pin. Um, that elderly couple unfortunately passed away in this last year. And the family asked if they could do, they could do, okay, I'm going to turn off my video to see if the audio will get back. That's a good idea. So that family asked, if, that family asked if they could, uh, if they could cater their funeral at that store because their parents loved that place so much. And so what does that show us that they, they helped this elderly couple out, which is a beautiful thing. But this elderly couple obviously was talking about, was talking about this, uh, the experience they had at that store. Uh, another yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's amazing. I mean, again, like to your point, the didn't cost them too much, you know, to, to do that. Exactly. Um, Ace Hardware is a great customer experience. I don't know how many people have experience with Ace Hardware. They have some beautiful, they have some beautiful uh, processes that help with customer experience. But one day an old lady came, showed up to the store um, in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. It was a really hot day. She was, she, she'd overheated, didn't know where she was, didn't know why she was there. And uh, so they sat her down, they gave her some ice water. And once she cooled down, she said, I, I, I just feel like I should go home. And the, the assistant manager, go, he delivered things to her home before. She said, okay, I'll take you home. And on the way home, the old lady goes, well, would you mind stopping at the grocery store? Because I need to get some things. And so uh, he took this little old lady to the grocery store and she picked up some bread and some milk and some things. And then he took her home. That little extra has nothing to do with Ace Hardware. Perfect attendance meeting has nothing to do with S-Mart supermarkets. But it's that, it's that little unexpected that make people loyal for life. Um, another client of mine in Panama, I, I lived in Panama doing a project with Lexus uh, for a year and a half, a couple years ago. And Capital Pacific Bank was one of my clients. And Capital Pacific Bank wanted to be different. And so one of the things they did is they, they ordered a custom air freshener. It smelled great. And one of the things we did, they had, it wasn't a typical bank. You went in and they had leather, leather sofas. Like I loved observing customer experience there because it was just these beautiful leather sofas that I could sit in and, and watch people. And uh, 
it had this great smell. Well, so what they did is on their bank statements that they would send out to people, they would send out, they, they would spray this paper with the same odor from the branch. And so when you got this, when you got your bank statement and opened it up, it was like the old school days of grandma writing grandpa letter, letter right? Spraying the perfume on it. <laughs> You would open it and you would connect instantly with this branch where they had a beautiful environment, great customer experience, and, and people raved about it. I mean, it was something that people talked about and they said that it cost them less than a penny to spray that odor on, on their statements, right? And so by, by doing something less than a penny, um, and so your cost per customer was eight cents a year, they were able to have these raving customers that were constantly talking about it. Now let's go to the next one, Dan. Okay. It's got another poll here. So what is the common factor in all those stories? Um, uh, Zoom doesn't allow you to do like a, a free form entry. So if you have a, have a thought about those three stories, providing you heard them, <laughs> um, you know, go ahead and enter that in the, in the chat. If you, didn't, if you couldn't hear, just uh, enter no idea. Uh, because it's hard to hear the stories, uh, but I think I think we have the audio connect uh, corrected here now that you've uh, turned off your video. Uh, I don't know what yep. that's saying about what you look like, Brett. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but maybe maybe you have I, a face I'm for radio. So <laughs> I'm so handsome that people were distracted; <laughs> their ears stopped working. Exactly. So there's some good stuff really? coming up from the thing. But going the extra mile, kindness always pays off in business. Just a little extra. None of those things were huge extras. Yeah, they definitely weren't van vanilla. And they definitely exceeded expectations yeah. at an acceptable cost for the business. One thing that the all three of them had to do with it, it had nothing to do with their core business. Absolutely mm -hmm. nothing. Right? Re recognizing a, an elderly couple for perfect attendance has nothing to do with the supermarket. Um, giving an old lady a ride home into the supermarket has nothing to do with Ace Hardware's business. And great smells has nothing to do with banging. In fact, money smells terrible. Um, but someone sat down and either they allowed their employees to do things. So one of the important things is the employee, the Ace Hardware employee and the store manager had the ability to make these decisions going the extra mile. And in the, the, the bank, someone sat down and decided that they would do something that was a little extra. And so all these companies were thinking about customer experience. And so- Yeah, the- um... Uh, one of my one of my favorite sayings is uh, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is a little extra. Yeah, and, and it doesn't have to be a lot extra. It can be going to make a copy of keys. I mean, how far away was the Ace Hardware from your house, Dan? It was a, like a five minute drive. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, you could literally walk. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's not a huge extra, um, and it's something that we do. I'd forgotten about that. To tell you the truth. Um, it's something that we as a company make a habit of. And so sometimes we can, we can understand what our customers expect just because we're people just like them. Uh, we expect good treatment. We, we know that going a little bit extra can exceed these customer expectations. When I told you guys those three stories, all of us could, with an ounce of empathy, could understand why those expectations were exceeded. But one of the important things is always knowing that expectation line so that we can, we can, we can go above it. And one of, the, one of the easiest ways to do that is by net promoter score. If we can go to the next slide. Um, just in the chat or raise your hand. Um, who, who among you are, are familiar with the net promoter score? I know that Intuit. A, that was a big thing at Intuit about Intuit 10 years was one ago. Of the first it was one of the first companies that really implemented it. I mean, they did it a long time ago when Bain and company just, just let it go. So the net promoter score, we've all got those surveys that say on a scale of one to 10, how likely are you to recommend us to your friends and family and why? Those are the two questions of net promoter. And, uh, and so the nines and the tens are promoters. 
sevens, eights are neutral and below seven are detractors. Those are the guys that want to burn your business down. <laughs> um, and so what the net promoter is you take a percentage of promoters and you subtract your percentage of detractors and you come up with one number. And it's a beautiful thing because it's the one number to measure a customer experience that didn't exist before. And, and since it's so widespread, you can pretty easily compare yourself in your industry. Like you can go and look up net promoter for airline industry and you can see what the average net promoter score is. And so if your airline is above that, you can say, okay, I, we're a little bit better than, uh, than Delta, which shouldn't be too hard. Um, <laughs> and so when we know so everyone likes this number, right? That we can get, okay, I have a 47 net promoter, or I have a 15, or I have a negative net promoter, I have more detractors than I have promoters. It gives us this number. But the important question to me is the number plus the why, because then customers tell us why. And you would be amazed at the things you, keep, you, you can read when you get these surveys, right? And so to know where we can exceed expectations, we've got to know what the expectations are. But just, just as kind of a thought experiment, during this moment, during this little time together, what, what areas do you guys think that you could exceed customers or clients' expectations? Has anyone had any ideas during this put little, that little the, put, that, put that in the chat if you if you, if you, if you, get, um, if you have an, a eureka or aha moment. What areas could you exceed your client expectations when it comes to running their books Beautiful. or, or helping them? Birthday, birthdays are such low-hanging fruit. Um, I love birthdays because it's so easy. No one expects their, their bookkeeper accountant to send them a birthday gift. Um, when we send Christmas cards, don't do, don't do your company logo on it. Just do you. Um, send it out. Um, I, use, uh, I use a service. Um, what's the name of it? That I'll, uh, I'll send it to Dan. But they copied my handwriting. And so I can send handwritten cards to people on Christmas because they just use a computer to copy my handwriting. They, they put it in a, in a CNC machine with a ballpoint pen. And so I do handwritten Christmas cards to everyone that's ever done a roof with me and ever will. So the, I don't know where to send yours, Dan, because you're kind of a nomad now. But. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll pretend you got it came to me. <laughs> exactly. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take a picture of yours and send it to you. Um, okay. <laughs> let's go to the next. And go to, go, let's go ahead and skip this one. Um, mm -hmm. And so on the NPS, it's called the outer loop where we learn from the customer feedback. Because basically what NPS does is it has people raise their hand and say, I'm in this category. So I can go to the detractors and find out what, what things I'm doing bad that's getting detractors. But for me, the interesting part is going to the people that love me, the nines and the tens, the promoters, and finding out why they're so happy with me. And it's maybe because they got, they got a special little experience that I can do, I can broaden and apply to more people. And so anyone that's not doing NPS, NPS isn't, isn't something you have to pay. It's, a, it's open source. Um, surprisingly enough, Bain and company decided to make it free. Um, and so there's really low cost softwares that you can do uh, survey monkey, um, things like that, that you can send out uh, an NPS survey and start getting this information, but don't just stick with the number, dive deep in the feedback and start looking for repeated things. So if, if we have, for example, in, in the, the supermarket, the S Mart that I, that I work with, we, we implemented the NPS and one of their feedbacks was we, on the detractor side, we found we found a bad process in the cafeteria for buying uh, rotisserie chickens. And so okay, who cares about rotisserie chickens? This company sells 12 million rotisserie chickens a year. Um, we, we got that feedback. We looked at it. We were able to fix a process that we really don't have time to get into now. But they upped the sales 20% of their rotisserie chickens just by fixing a little, a little process that, that didn't take any cost to fix except for my fees, I guess. But, uh, and, when, and when we were talking yesterday, you were talking about, you know, reaching out to the promoters first, right? Yeah, as, I as opposed to, to you know, talking to the detractor. And so, yeah, and, and, and it's pretty simple. What I do, I like the phone. I give a call and say, hey, hey Dan, I, I saw that you, uh, you answered our NPS survey. I appreciate that. 
And I saw that you gave us a nine. And the reason you said is because we went the extra mile and, and copied your keys. What, what surprised you about that? Why did that, why did that make us a nine for you? Um, and so I can have this conversation with Dan and maybe that, that key thing, the copying of the keys, isn't something that I can do with every customer, but I can say, okay, I'm going to tell my guys to keep their ears open. Yeah. Dan's not going to give me a 10. I don't know why he's, he's stingy with that. Um, but one thing I can do is I can have my guys keep my, keep their ears open. And so we're doing a roof with a lady that's renovating a home. And uh, she, I heard her talking on the phone about getting a trash trailer to her property to throw away some, some of the drywall that, that the drywall has left. And I said, hey, hey, don't get a trash trailer. Mine's going to be here tomorrow. Just use ours. And because of what I learned from Dan that I need to pay attention to customers, we implement that process. And so all my guys know they can spend up to 100 bucks to make a customer happy. Right? And that's a process I've implemented because I've listened to customers. And so start with your promoters because your promoters already love you. So they're going to answer your questions even more. And some detractors, like I was telling Dan, in, in the words of the modern poet Taylor Swift, haters are going to hate. Some of those detractors are just lifelong detractors. Uh, yeah. I'm related to a couple of those. And so, <laughs> Not going to mention lot, any names. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot funner to call your, call your promoters. One thing you want to do when you call them is to ask them for that Google review, ask them for that Yelp review. Um, because people, I mean, we, a lot of, I don't know how many of you run ads. I can tell you people do not believe them. it may get you on their radar, but people do not believe when you say you're the best in the business. People do not believe when you, when they say, when they, you, they say, you know, a lot about QuickBooks. Now people believe that Dan knows a lot about QuickBooks because he's a top 10 pro advisor said by someone else. People believe that enhanced roofing does good roofs because when you when you look for enhanced roofing in Safford, Arizona, we've got, I think, 18 five-star ratings, right? And so those are believable because we didn't, we are not saying it. Um, and so use this, use this, which you can, there's my email, there's my phone number. Feel free to reach out to me if you have questions. Um, I'd, I'd be I'd love to talk to each and every one of you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to send you a bill after a phone call. Um, <laughs> any one of you that wants to schedule an hour, hour with me that I, we can talk about your business in specific, I would love to do it. Um, and I think we can, I can add a lot of value in that time. So do we have any questions? I think we're, we're running up on time, right, Dan? Yeah, it's, we have about seven minutes uh, in, in the hour itself. Um, any other experiences that, um, that you've had either in your own business or, or working with other companies that, that have really been that separator between satisfaction and, and seduction? Yeah, let me think, let me think for a sec. Um, so in that same, in that same supermarket, the pharmacy there, they had, a, they have a pharmacy in the supermarket and uh, an elderly gentleman that they'd known had not shown up for a while. And uh, the, the pharmacy, the lady that worked at the, the, the pharmacy there knew that he was alone. And so after work one day, she, she actually asked if she could go home a little early. And she went to this guy's house and found out that he was sick and by himself. He hadn't eaten in two days and she was able, able to help him. Um, stories like that just amaze me. And what, what I've realized in life is People that create customer experiences create experiences for people. I mean, I, I call them uh, creators of experiences. Uh, people that do it for, I mean, it's something that just natural for me. My, my mom taught me that. If I can go around and I can make someone happy, I do it. Um, and and what do you, so, what do you think in the in, in the accounting industry? You know, professional accounting bookkeepers. How can they create these types of experiences? Um, you know, for their, for their clients. Um, is, is it something specific for, for bookkeeping, like uh, going, you know, creating a report that they didn't know they didn't need? Uh, or is it more just, you know, in keeping your ears open as, as you do talk to them? Yeah, one thing you can do is take these questions that I think 
take the questions you get all the time and you can create like little videos for those, a little FAQ video. And so when someone asks a question, answer it and send them a video so that they can, they can, they can watch it just so that they know that you thought about them enough to prepare information for them. Because I can, I can guarantee you, you guys this year have had the same question asked 40 or 50 times, right? So find a better way to answer that question. One of the things that Dan and I talked about yesterday, in my mind, um, back not too many years ago, a, an accountant or a bookkeeper was someone, I like that, don't be an accountant, be a, don't just be an accountant, be accountable. But a bookkeeper accountant was someone that was on the team. They were internal in the company. And that, that's gone away. I mean, very few companies have this internal accounting accounting department until they reach a certain size. And so for me as a small business owner, I'm yearning for someone that I feel like is part of the team that has a vested interest in my success. Um, I, I had a bookkeeper for a while that was kind of like, hey, you know, here's the stuff. And, and they would just send me these things. And, and then I switched to a different bookkeeper that, that added a process. I think I told you about that process, Dan, about the uh, five metrics for five minutes at five o'clock, where uh, this, uh, this bookkeeper goes yeah. in and uh, goes through your, your QuickBooks and set up five metrics that I sit down at five o'clock and I take five minutes to look at these five metrics. So it's five metrics for five minutes at five o'clock. That has helped my business substantially because they took the time to help me set that up because they, they, I really feel like they want me to be successful. I like so this I uh, comment here, be the bookkeeper they didn't know they needed so they can make stuff happen. Perfect. <laughs> but good stuff, not, yeah. not the, yeah, <laughs> not the other stuff. right. Not the, not the other stuff. <laughs> So, so go that little extra, um, get to know them on a personal level, because one of the questions there is, is how do you, how can you do it when it's a heavily, it's a process oriented? Um, there's still people behind it. Yeah. Um, the five metrics that I look at is cash in the account, accounts payable, accounts receivable. I look at the balance sheet and I forget what the other one is, but it's all there on my, in my, Organized. So they created. They books. created so like a little think, dashboard for you, so that you just yeah. Boom, 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 boom. You look at those. Uh, they're kind of like um, uh, your your dashboard of your car, right? You know, you've got those five things. You know, uh, I've got gas in the car. I've got um, how fast I'm going, how far I've gone. Those types of metrics that you look at in the, in a reporting standpoint, and then. And then from you, now I've been doing you, it for about three or four months. It, it's a glance, but um, it's just a glance, but I can start to see things change. And so my, my brain recognizes patterns. I go, okay, accounts receivable is a little too high. What's going on here? Or, or and, and that to me has been huge. And it's just something that, that really they don't offer a lot. The guy just said, hey, we've done this before. It might be useful to you. Yeah, maybe right. we should instead have, of, uh, of have your bookkeeper come on so he can talk about those five, 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 five. I will ask <laughs> metrics. Um, yeah. What? The, so Mary, Mary brought up a, a, an interesting point. She she answers emails, texts seven days a week, most hours. Um, what? Uh, for me, that that's kind of like a slippery slope, right? Because if you start doing that then it could be an expect an expectation um what, what are your thoughts on that brett yeah if you're if you're going to create expectations you have to nail it and and one of the, one of the negative parts of, of customer experience is the, the wow today is expected tomorrow uh, mm. and, and so you have to be careful that it that it's actually sustainable it's it's systemizable and replicable because like, like I, I think Dan's alluding to, if, if Mary, if I send her an email and she always answers it, and then I send her an email on Friday and she doesn't get to a Monday, I'm going to be like, what the heck? <laughs> and so you've got to be, you got to be, you got to understand what you're implicitly promising when you, when you do something like that. It's something that I do. I, I tell people that we, as a roofing company, we will answer your phone call. We don't hide from your phone call. If we don't answer, you'll get a call back in the next couple of minutes because we answer our phone. Sometimes I hate that I say that uh, <laughs> because I've gotten calls at 11 o'clock at night. 
Mm-hmm. It, it's not something that happens often. And so it, in the end, I think it is a plus. But yeah, it, that may be something that in the future, as we grow more, that we change. Right. Or, or that you find some way to implement that. So it's still, you know, there's some process in the way in, in, in between that. So it's actually personalizing yeah, use, the experiences. Use technology. Technology is so amazing these days to help with your customer experience. And a lot of industries, I know the contractor industries, they, for some reason, are so resistant to use new technology. And, and it really half of my customer experience is those are those software that I talked about. Awesome. Uh, so real quick, uh, because now we're now we're over time. <laughs> uh, oops, I forgot to end the poll. So the last one here, thinking of uh, customer experience, think of something you need to, uh, would you fill in the blank? Is it, for, for you as, a, as, a, as an accounting professional, is it something you need to start doing, stop doing, or just continue doing to seduce your clients? Um, any other uh, final, final thoughts as, uh, as the folks are entering in their, uh, their answers? Oh, I didn't launch the poll. There we go. There we go. <laughs> sorry again for all of the, um, <laughs> the, yeah, the sound for- issues and... Uh, and- technical issues. Um, we really need Michelle here. <laughs> Raise my prices. That's, that's, that's uh, one of the uh, answers. <laughs> well, one thing the customer experience does give you is it does give you that confidence to charge a premium price um, because you are offering a premium service. Um, Dan, Dan got in at a good time. My, my roofing prices have increased drastically since Dan. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Glad to help with that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, if, if you're willing, I can send you the difference and we can <laughs> <laughs> think of how much it would be if we uh, did it now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, awesome, Brett. I appreciate you uh, coming on um, and even going next door to you. Um, so Taco Bell, um, now that we've heard all of the <laughs> all of the background noise of what's going on at Taco Bell. Sorry about that background noise. I, I hope you guys were able to get some value out of it. This, yeah, you know, I think we'd love to have you back on to talk about, you know, some of the things that some of the technologies that you do use uh, in your business uh, to help uh, streamline those some of those processes and, and be more scalable. Because uh, normally I, I would have expected you to be on top of a roof. Uh, doing this uh, on site. <laughs> I, I, I thought about it. I thought about it. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, well, coming up, uh, we'll, we'll, our next uh, QB Power Hour is going to be the rest in peace to the IOP. Uh, and ADP will be talking about how to evaluate some new payroll options. Um, we'll take a break for, for Thanksgiving. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll have our year end uh, on, on December uh, seven. So thank you again for, for joining us, Brett, and uh, everyone who, who is here uh, and not at Scaling New Heights. Hey, thanks, everyone. You guys have a good one. And we will see you next time on the QB Power Hour.